So let's see what we've learned thus far. Question one, which of the following is one of the perspectives of a balanced scorecard? Is it supplier, creditors, learning and growth, or employees? The answer is C. The four perspectives of a balanced scorecard are financial, customer, internal business process, and learning and growth. Question two. An opportunity that does not meet a customer specification is called what? A defect, a non-specified object, an opportunity, or performance? The answer is A. Each unit has a number of opportunities as per customer requirements. If an opportunity does not meet customer specifications, it is called a defect. Question three. Quality Function Deployment, or QFD, is a methodology for what? Removing bugs from a code? Identifying and defining key customer requirements? Measuring the reliability of a software product? Or training employees in quality issues? The answer is B. QFD is also called the voice of the customer and is used to identify customer requirements. Question four, for a process at five sigma level, how many opportunities lie outside the specification limits? Is it 3.4, 99.9767, 233, or five? Well, the answer is C. A process at five sigma level is 99.9767% yield. Out of 1 million opportunities, the process has no defects 99.9767 times. Question five. Defects, overproduction, inventory, and motion are all examples of what? Waste, 5S target areas, noise, or value-added activities? The answer is A. Defects, overproduction, inventory, and motion are four of the seven wastes that we mentioned in Lean. Question six. The primary factor in the successful implementation of Six Sigma is to have what? The necessary resources, the support of leadership of top management, explicit customer requirements, or a comprehensive training program? Well, the answer is B. Implementing Six Sigma requires change in the whole organization, and hence support of both top management and leadership is essential. Question seven. An RPN is calculated how? By adding severity, occurrence, and detection? By adding severity and occurrence? By multiplying severity and occurrence? Or it's the product of severity, occurrence, and detection? Well, the answer is D. An RPN is calculated by multiplying severity, occurrence, and detection, with each given a value on a scale of 1 to 10. So therefore, your RPN is equal to occurrence times severity times detection. Question 8. Which of the following can be used to analyze, assess, and prioritize data? Is it QFD, a balanced scorecard, a failure mode effect analysis, or design for Six Sigma? The answer is C. An FMEA's RPN is the measure used to quantify or assess the risk, analyze its cause and effects, and prioritize the risk associated with a design or process. Question nine. Which of the following is a methodology to improve the process? Is it DMAIC? DMADV, IDOV, or DFSS? The answer is A. DMAIC is a methodology used for improving a process, while DMADV and IDOV and DFSS methods are meant in designing or redesigning processes. So here's a quick recap of what we've learned in this lesson. 
Six Sigma follows the DMAIC process that focuses on developing and delivering near-perfect products and services consistently. Taking a process to Six Sigma level ensures that the quality of the products is maintained, with the primary goal always being increased profit. That lean is a continuous process to eliminate or reduce waste in non-value-added activities from a process. And design for Six Sigma ensures that a new product or service meets customer requirements and a process is at Six Sigma level using tools such as QFD or quality function deployment and an FMEA or failure mode effect analysis. And this concludes lesson one. Up next will be lesson two, where we will jump into define.